it's going to happen. So it could be that the, the gold price is saying that that is near. Um, but when, when it does happen, it's going to bring gold prices down just a lot less than everything else. Um, we're going to see interest rates head higher and higher. Um, can they use a, a central bank digital currency? We already have central bank digital currencies. It's called the dollar, right? It's a central bank currency and it's digital, right? Who cares if it's on a blockchain or not? What's the difference? In this discussion, Rafi Farber talks about how inflation, gold prices, and the value of money are connected. He compares what's happening now to what happened in the 1970s. Farber explains how inflation can affect prices and might cause problems in today's economy. He focuses on the danger of having too much debt and how that could lead to higher interest rates. Farber's ideas give us a clearer picture of what's going on in the economy today. So, don't miss this informative video, stay connected till the end. Now, let's listen to Rafi Farber. In terms of the price of gold, um, you know, it goes, it goes up and goes down. I can't say if this rally is uh, what is uh, going to precipitate the end of the banking system as we know it in terms of the proximate cause. Um, and I say, like, frankly, I'm surprised um, because the monetary supply, the money supply isn't moving up. So what is causing, what is causing this? It's actually, it's still moving down. It's, it's been moving slightly up, but nowhere near the, um, nowhere, nowhere near the top it was in April, 2022. So it's still moving down. So then why are gold prices moving that? And there's no excitement among the stackers. All the excitement is in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and all this other magic. Uh, and the, the, even, even those who chase ETFs aren't chasing them. GLD has been shedding, uh, has been shedding ounces, shedding tons. And so have all the other ETFs. So uh, there's the, where's the excitement? What's going on? And it seems to be in the banks versus the high net wealth individuals are the ones who are having a war here because nobody else is involved. Uh, and usually when when the, the gold price moves like this, there's something going on in the banking system, but nobody can really identify exactly what it is until it happens. And we know something is going to happen because something always happens. Just by the sheer force of the logic of it, the more debt you issue, the more dollars are needed to pay it back. Uh, if you're shrinking the money supply at the same time, you're going to require more and more dollars on a smaller and smaller monetary base, and then something's going to explode. So nobody knows exactly where the fault line is, but it's going to happen. So it could be that the, the gold price is saying that that is near. Um, but when, when it does happen, it's going to bring gold prices down, just a lot less than everything else. So uh, that's one of the confusing things. In 2020, when gold went down from uh, whatever it was, it was uh, 1700 1800 I don't remember exactly. Uh, and then it went down to a low of 1450 And everyone was like, oh, why is gold going down? But if you, if you measured uh, the gold to commodities ratio, it went to an all-time high. I remember, like oil was at negative 35, and gold went down from 1800 to 1450 Oh, my gosh, it's so scary. Um, silver went down more. Uh, but that was the all-time high of, for gold prices r against pretty much everything uh, ever in economic history. So I'd say it was doing pretty well. Uh, but still, even, even so, we're going to have a final financial crisis. It's going to be the last one. Um, I'm willing to hang my hat on that. And gold prices are going to go down temporarily. And then the, the, the Fed's going to provide all the dollars that everybody needs for the next, I don't know, year, which is probably going to be about seven, eight, nine trillion dollars. And then it's just going to, gold is just going to go vertical, which means that the dollar is just going to go down. And uh, then you're going to see a real panic. So I think we're months away from that. It could be any time now. Um, well, it, it does, but it's, it, it's, it kind of correlates with it. I mean, it really depends. The, the gold price moving is really the, how much money uh, how much money a dollar is worth, right? Gold is the money. The dollar is just the derivative. So it, if prices are heading down, you don't need as much money to sustain your life, right? You can, if, if production is heading up, uh, this is one of the, this is one of the confusing uh, paradoxical things about inflation. Like the more money you put into the system, the less the dollar is worth. But at the same time, for example, let's say with oil, the more the more dollars you have before they're spent on other things, they can be used as a um, 
they can be used to invest more in oil infrastructure and finding more oil. So then inflation will lead to a higher supply of oil, which will lead to lower oil prices for some periods. Like the trend obviously is up, but for some periods, uh, more commodities can be taken out of the ground if you inflate. So that so people don't know, does inflation cause lower prices? Does it cause higher prices? I mean, it depends. It, it, there's Nothing is, uh, is a one-to-one here. But the, the trend is obviously, yes, it causes higher prices. So if gold prices uh, head higher, meaning if, if the, the amount of money in a dollar plummets faster than the prices of other things fall, then you're going to really have a uh, disruption in your standard of living because the prices of everything are going to go up. So that happened in the late 1970s to early 1980. And even in the mid 1970s from like say 1972 to 1980 with about three years of, uh, of calming in the mid seventies, the, the, there was a lot of panic about the global economy, not just the United States. So I think we're at the 1970s point where things start to spiral out of control and they did spiral out of control in the 1970s and standard of standards of living really went down the tubes. Um, and there was serious dollar panic among the central banks. If you look into the, the transcripts of the federal reserve in the late 1970s, they're really panicking. It's really, they're like, they, we don't know what to do, Paul, what do we do? I'm talking, I'm talking about Paul Volcker and, and then it, the, the tone there is just like despair. The only thing different between now and the 1970s is that in the 1970s, the debt was in principle payable, right? Um, not, not the principal debt. I'm saying in, in principle, it was payable. You could pay 20% interest rates on the debt because it was only like 35, 36% of GDP. And even that's a fake measure, but you could sustain this for a while. Um, but you can't now. So, uh, this is it. Um, we're going to see interest rates head higher and higher and the interest rates heading higher and higher means that the fed has to pay more and more money to sterilize the, 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 the money from, uh, circulating into the economy. The, the way that it prevents money from circulating to the economy and prevents dollars from circulating is by paying interest on it. And that translates to federal reserve losses. So the higher interest rates go, the higher federal reserve losses, um, and uh, that means the more unbacked dollars enter the system and you, end a, you enter a positive feedback loop, which we were on in 1979, um, but uh, eventually interest rates got control of the situation because the debt was still payable, but now it's not. So when we head there, it's just going to keep heading higher and higher and we will spiral out of control very quickly. There's nothing they can do to stop it from collapsing. Um, there, there might be something they can do to uh, prolong it from collapsing. I don't know what that would be. In 2020, the the idea was, well, let's lock everybody in their houses and put everybody in prison in the entire world and then uh, we'll figure you know, we'll figure out what to do next. That was that was how they did it back then. So, I don't think that's going to fly this time. Um, can they use a, a central bank digital currency? We already have central bank digital currencies. It's called the dollar, right? It's a central bank currency and it's digital. Right? Who cares if it's on a blockchain or not? What's the difference? Like if they if they enter if they start a central bank digital currency that's on a blockchain, okay, so there's a different technology that's moving it around. But what do you mean they're gonna say, okay, everybody goes back to like Fight Club zero dollars, and we're just gonna give you a spontaneous random amount of dollars, and everyone can just uh, you know if you were poor and we decide to give you a trillion you're rich but if you had you know if you're a billionaire in dollars and now we decide to give you only a few hundred now you're poor oh th no that's not going to work that's insane um that would lead to mass riots and and lawlessness and anarchy in the very bad sense where nobody cares about anything and they just start killing each other so no that's not going to happen and and if they change the technology from the current digital dollar that you see on your screen uh when you go to your bank account uh, you know, sign into your app on your bank account, you see a number, that's a digital currency. Put it on a blockchain, the only difference is they can track everything that you do um, and everything that you buy and everything that you sell every second. So do we want that? No, but would it stop the, the collapse? No, it won't. Nothing will stop the collapse. Before you go, remember to subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into economic complexities and insightful analyses. Stay ahead of the curve by joining our community of informed viewers. Hit the subscribe button now to ensure you don't miss out on future discussions that could impact your financial decisions. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next video.